Tonight, a small business in Folsom is trying a new trick to beat the economic downturn. KCRA 3's Mike Carroll traveled to a Folsom restaurant to find out how changing its name could keep the doors open. Fine, thank you. All right, see you a little more. Brother and sister Greg Brusso and Rebecca Pouch opened their breakfast and lunch diner four years ago, calling it Ernie's after their father's restaurant, Ernie's of Lake Tahoe, a successful establishment for 30 years. So we do a lot more breakfast than we do lunch. Uh, that's why we do breakfast and lunch all day. We were in business probably about not even six months when the economy really started to take a dive. Since then, they've been watching their numbers slowly trickle downward. They knew they needed to change or go under. A few weeks ago, looking out at their quiet restaurant, it hit them. We thought, let's do a $5 menu. It was sort of a joke at first. Let's just charge, you know, make everything $5. And we're sort of kidding. And then the more we thought about it, it was like, this might work. We said, you know what? If we want to push the $5 menu, then let's call it the $5 diner. People know exactly what it is when they drive by. So we changed our prices, our menu. Everything's $5. At first, the regulars were afraid that the diner had changed hands and were relieved to see Rebecca and Greg still running the place. I thought their idea of changing the, the name over into the $5 diner. Uh, Diner was was excellent. A lot of people are saving about anywhere from two to three fifty a meal. We'll definitely save some money, and it's always been good food. Win win. But by charging less for their meals, Rebecca and Greg have to attract many more customers into the diner in order to make up the difference. Seems to be working though. Once we get our advertising out there and uh, word of mouth, obviously, I think we're going to be doing just fine. Rebecca and Greg and the five dollar diner are in Folsom for the long haul. Six, seven, eight. In Folsom, Mike Carroll, KCRA 3 reports. Well, small family owned restaurants like the $5 Diner aren't alone in having to be creative in this economy. Even superstar chefs like Gordon Ramsay are turning to smaller, less expensive menus to keep their regular customers coming back. Now on to Sacramento County where it is a four-footed challenge. There are thousands of animals in this community that need homes. And funding to try to fix this issue, of course, has shrunk. Common Ground's Mike Carroll shows us now what's being done to help thousands of animals be home for Christmas. You notice on the other side of our kennel, it's all the stray side. Laura Cass is one of the many volunteers who keep the Sacramento Animal Shelter running. I come once a week minimum to come and clean and then as much as I can spend time with the animals. A lot of people just walking away from their animals as well as their houses. The Sacramento County Animal Shelter is at capacity. Unfortunately, we're well over 200 cats most days. The number of household pets being turned into the shelters is up all over the city, at the Sacramento SPCA as well. We're seeing a rise of 1,500 animals this year coming into our shelter, and it's mainly due to economic reasons. Well, hello. Okay, guys, get back. And like everyone else these days, they're having to do more with less. Just over a year ago, Sacramento County opened their new animal shelter, a brand new facility over three times the size of its old shelter. But the county's financial crisis has cut deeply into their operating budget. Upon building this facility, we had 57 staff members, and at this point we have 29 um, full-time staff employees. But the number of animals coming into the shelter is rising. The reason? The economy. People losing their jobs, losing their homes, and unable to take care of their pets. But really the foreclosure rate, that's increasing. That's directly impacting our facilities here in the Sacramento region. That's what happened to this dog, who was dropped off overnight at the shelter's dog park. In fact, we've had to change our computer system a little bit to include the word foreclosure for a surrender reason. Now, the county shelter, along with the SPCA and city shelters, have all joined together in a united effort called Home for the Holidays to get a thousand pets adopted by Christmas. And they've reduced their adoption fees by half to only about $50 or so. Yeah, I think it was definitely a good incentive to come out and start looking. And they have so many great dogs right now that, you know, the hard part was just narrowing it down to one. And it seems to be working. The shelters, which on an average see 10 animals adopted on a given day, right now are seeing 20 or more animals going to new homes per day. She didn't sleep at all last night. She was so excited dreaming about him. At the SPCA, Sherry Roy adopted this little dog, Freckles, as a Christmas present for her adopted 10-year-old daughter, Angeline. So we thought this would be perfect and we wanted to rescue him. So. There is still a long way to go, but pictures like this make Home for the Holidays worth the effort. In Sacramento, I'm Mike Carroll for Common Ground.
Thousands of animals are available for adoption across Northern California. Check with your local SPCA to try and find a new family member for your home. For more specific information on those taking part in the Home for the Holidays program, you'll find links on our website, kcra.com. Welcome back to Common Ground. I'm Adrian Banker. The economy is making a little bit of a comeback, and for businesses trying to stay afloat, it's been a period of adjustment, to say the least. Now, Common Ground's Mike Carroll went back to Awesome Video. He was there a year ago, one of the few remaining video stores that are privately owned in our area. He wanted to see what they've done to keep the doors open. Awesome Video really is awesome. It's a fun place just to kind of come and browse. The informant? Oh yeah. yeah. I liked it. It was kind of goofy, but I liked it. Yeah. It's been a year of change for Awesome Video. To stay competitive, store owner Maitu Bui has slashed prices and is selling off old and duplicate stock. Just trying to be flexible, that's all. It's a tough time for video stores all over. Two big Hollywood video stores nearby are closing up as more and more people turn to Netflix and internet downloads. I know because you guys are like the last place to rent movies pretty much. Seeing the competition folding is not something my two is cheering about. The fact that they closing the store down, it, it's, it's really sad though. It's really, you know, like make you think, you know, like this business model change. I'm just glad to see that she's still, she's still managing to hang on. But the biggest and hardest change has been the loss of my two's dog Simba after a long illness. Come on, Simba. Come on. You can bring my movie up there for me. Here, go bring it to mine. Simba had been a special helper at Awesome Video. It's, it's such a pain when, you know, like people ask me about Simba. Yeah, with the big loss, really big. You can, uh, and then they ask me, are you going to have another dog? Maybe. But I don't, I don't know. It, it's really hard. <laughs> what has kept Maitu going through all of this has been strong customer support. You know, Maitu, I mean, she's, she's like a friend of our family. To make her small business survive, Maitu has developed a strategy. Low prices, loyal customers, and to make awesome video a place of destination. This is where people come. It's a community of people who like movies. I find a lot of times that I, when I come here, you can find things that uh, are a little bit tougher to find. You know, this is just like one of the passion. You know, I love movie and I love to see the local. Like you see, you know, that local come in and just talk with them and, you know, interact with them. If anything, Awesome Video's customers have become even more loyal. I like the friendliness here in the shop. It's very personal. You feel like a person here. Maitu has been running the store herself seven days a week. But now, finally, is feeling that the past 18 months of belt tightening may have paid off. From now on, I should go back and hire my employees so I can have a, maybe one or two days, you know, off. My two and her customers are determined to keep awesome video going. We don't want anything to happen to this place. It's, 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 it's important. In Sacramento, I'm Mike Carroll for Common Ground. Awesome Video has already hired back two part-time employees, and customers say that the diversity of movies at Awesome Video reminds them of the old tower, and people from all over the region come to find out what they have in store. The owner says that she's looking forward to getting a day off. It's called the Garden of Life, sunflowers growing in Cameron Park. Yep, they give strength and support to cancer survivor Nancy Siegler, and she now shares her garden and inspiration with KCRA 3's Mike Carroll. And then these are my babies. Nancy Siegler has always just, liked sunflowers. Look at that. Some rising over 12 feet tall. They just make you feel good. Some people say it looks like we're growing bamboo. Look at this. And then as we get down here, you start to see the colors. But it in. wasn't until a year ago that the life they projected took on new meaning for Nancy. And the day before Christmas, well, she said I had breast cancer. Nancy was lucky. She was diagnosed early. That's a big word, that C word. During her recovery, she needed to channel her mind onto something else. But I had no intentions of this, and then it hit me. I think it's the radiance. It makes you feel good. We have about 310 and 26 different species. One from Russia. I get three from Canada. This one here is chocolate. To keep her sunflowers forever in bloom, Nancy preserves them with photography. 
She's published a book of her photographs called The Power of the Sunflower. Now, I've been fiddling with it for a long time, never thinking I could do something like this. Now she's going to share her garden, opening it up to visitors as a fundraiser for the American Cancer Society. I have quite a few breast cancer survivors in our neighborhood. They come over and sit, just sit here and just feel good. And Nancy feels flowers. that in addition to the pink breast cancer ribbon, there should also be a breast cancer sunflower. To get this flower accepted in all phases of breast cancer. And I'm not sad that I had cancer, um, I'm not angry. If it hadn't been for cancer, they wouldn't be here, so they're pretty lucky. In Cameron Park, Mike Carroll, Channel 3 reports. Well, we're all pretty lucky. Those are beautiful. Yeah. Nancy Sunflower Gardens open to the public next weekend. That's August 14th and 15th. For more information on how to get a copy of Nancy's beautiful book of photography, we have a link to our website at kcra.com and also a slideshow of that garden. They do make you feel good when you look at they it. They do, yeah. They're beautiful plants. Well, a few weeks ago, we introduced you to Nancy Sigler, a breast cancer survivor who found strength in the power of sunflowers. Since then, Nancy opened up her garden to the public, and as KCRE3's Mike Carroll shows us, that decision has turned into a moneymaker. Um, I have 310 plants approximately and wow. 26 species. Nancy Siegler believes in the power of the sunflower. After surviving breast cancer this year, Nancy created this garden made up entirely of sunflowers. She believes in their strength so strongly that two weeks ago she opened her garden up to the public as a fundraiser for the American Cancer Society. She was hoping to have 50 people show up and raise $1,000. We weren't even sure anybody would come. But people did come to Nancy's garden, over 600 in all. It was just moving. It was very moving. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, when she finally told me her final tally, I said, wow. Wow, the power of the sunflower. This is what I'd like to give you. We raised $4,192. That's right. Nancy's open house raised $4,192 entirely through donations. Nancy is now planning to do this again next year. She's harvesting the seeds from this season's flowers for planting an even bigger garden, as well as selling the seeds so others can plant their own sunflower gardens. We have a list like this thick of cards of people that want seeds. And Nancy has even bigger goals. She's enlisting the help of Dr. Ernie Bodai, the Kaiser oncologist behind the breast cancer stamp, to make the sunflower the nationwide official flower in the battle against breast cancer. Nancy's an extraordinary person, and if it's something that she wants to do, I have a feeling she'll do it. We're spreading the sunflower. Yep. In Cameron Park, I'm Mike Carroll, KCRA 3 reports. For more information on Nancy and how to buy some of her sunflower seeds to start your own sunflower garden, go to kcra.com, click on the As Seen On section. What a beautiful symbol. I Just love that very story. sunshiny. Absolutely. Well, so when you think of California winemaking, think of names that have been around for years like Mondavi, Gallo. Mm -hmm. But in Cameron Park, there is one man who only planted grapevines nine years ago and just had a brand named Best in California at the State Fair. KCF3's Mike Carroll introduces us to Milo Olivo, the man behind these award-winning grapes. Well, in 2001, we did the vineyard. Nello Olivo bought his Cameron Park property with the idea of growing something on it. I wasn't quite sure if I wanted to grow grapes or a pomegranate. And he says if he knew then what it takes to create a vineyard from scratch. I would have probably had second thoughts about having a vineyard because it is a lot of work. Nello decided to grow grapes based on Cameron Park's altitude, 900 feet above sea level. And I started thinking, hmm, mini Napa climate. This might make a great vineyard. You gotta be one of two things to be in the wine business and the restaurant business, crazy or stupid. <laughs> I like to think Nello's a little crazy. Nello teamed up with noted winemaker Marco Capelli to produce his label. That's a nice bunch. Which is now being acclaimed as some of the finest wine in the state. Because I thought I'd just make some nice wine. And here are some astounding numbers. Nello Olivo's eight acre vineyard grows 4,630 vines, producing 32 tons of grapes. A third of that he'll sell to other wineries. From the remaining grapes, he'll produce 1,100 cases of wine in seven different varietals. The care and detail that Nello takes in the vineyard comes through in the wines. This is best of California. And Nello's wines have won 24 major wine competition awards just this year alone. This is all the new varietal. Nello is now starting to develop Sangrentino wine, the only vineyard outside of Italy to produce this. I see people drinking our wine and they're enjoying it. It's a very satisfying thing. Uh, you know, they're not spitting it out and they're not asking for the money back and that's always a blessing. In Cameron Park, Mike Carroll, 
KCRA 3 reports. Love to see that. Nello Olivo's wines, by the way, are available at his Sequoia restaurant in Placerville, as well as at Cordy Brothers, and uh, through his website, by the way, we have put a link at KCRA.com. It's nice to see local businesses do.